I'm so happy and it's a privilege to bring God's word to us today. To, um, it's an honor for my dearest father to bring the gospel to us. Amen. Amen. To my friends, to my brothers and sisters, and I hope you will be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, for some time, um, Pastor Dr. Phoebe has been speaking to us on faith. Praise the Lord. And um, last week, she dealt extensively on faith. Praise God. Tell me, are you having faith? Can you hear me or is my voice? Amen. Am I sounding low or just my faith? Amen. <laughs> I don't want to shout. Amen. So I'm trying not to. Praise God. Ask your neighbor, where is your faith? Amen. Ask someone, the next person close to you, where is your faith? For the harvest that you are trusting God for. Where is your faith? Praise the Lord. Check around, check around. He said, Where? Amen. So, so let's search. Where is your faith? Amen. Check, check. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You shall harvest in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what your year has been like or what is. Is, is happening right now. Praise the Lord. You are just beginning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid of your today. Amen. God has promised and he will fulfill. I want to preach today. Amen. Uh, not preach. Praise the Lord. I want to preach today on what I title No More Limits. Amen. Say with me, no more limit. No more limit. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you believe that limits are gone from your life, shout, I hear you. I hear you. Matthew chapter 14, verse 14. Let's begin and uh, just travel a bit. Uh, okay, 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 not that. Matthew 14, but um, 24, sorry, 24. 24, I missed it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you're happy and you know, say amen. amen. If you're happy and you know, say amen. amen. If you're happy and you know, and you really want to show, if you're happy and you know, shout no limits. No limits. Say never again. Never again. Never again. I want to prophesy something by the grace of my father. Hallelujah. This year you walk on water. People start searching for water after they leave church. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This year you walk on water. You walk on water. You walk on water. It will be a different experience for you. Uh, allow me to preach. Praise God. Allow me to preach. Like my father will say. But the sheep was now in the midst of, but the sheep was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves for the wind was contrary. Verse 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, doing what? Doing what? I said, This year you will walk on the sea. Uh, because there are people that will walk on rivers. There are people that walk on oceans. There are people that walk on lakes. But this year you walk on the sea. What did I say the message was? No. Eh? No. Preach it close to somebody. No. Ask the person, where is your limit? Where are the limits? What has been stopping you? What will stop you? What will still stop you? I. I. Where is the devil? Ask the person. Where is the devil? Where was the devil when you came? Where was the devil when you started this year? Where was Amadioha? Where was the witchcraft? Ah, ah. Did they stop you from waking up this today? today? God has quarantined witchcraft. 
The Bible says Jesus was walking on the sea. When? In the night. Ah, there's a problem now. I said I'm not teaching, so forgive me. You don't have points. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're not naming anything today. Praise God. Jesus was walking on the sea when? Hi. They told us that we should walk from 9 to 5. They say when you walk from 9 to 5, you know, they say that's what you, you know, you begin to make. That's when you start making money. Many great men call it the rat race. It's like everyone follows that pattern. But many people who have actually succeeded in life work from 5 to 9. I know you think uh, I was going to say something else. 5 to when? Jesus was walking on the sea. I know uh, the, the problem is that you think you are black. Where are you from? There's a problem now. <laughs> Shout with me, no more limits. No more limits. From, today. from today. You see, because uh, you will find out that what you think, like Pastor will say, is the problem, is not the problem. Go to verse 26. Let's begin to, to examine people's perspective. The Bible says, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, when they saw him doing something that had never been done before, people crossed through the Red Sea. They struck the road. The Bible says, and the sea opened, hither and thither, and they walked through. You have not heard when someone walked on the sea. Now you are, in, these, are these are disciples. Praise the Lord. These are not, these are not ordinary men. Ah. The Bible says when they saw him walking on the sea, when they saw something impossible, I, I wanted to name this message, nothing is impossible. As we are closing the faith message, but I said, let me stick with no more limit. So you hear me speaking about impossibilities and possibilities. Amen. Uh, uh, one of the things I learned from Pastor Iria is that uh, you, you don't have an opportunity when you're working with him to say, I can't. Sorry, so I'm going to expose some things. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, it's difficult if you walk very close. Some of my, my, my the older ones can, can say. When you go and meet him and say you were trying to do this thing and it was not working. He said, what, what, what is not working? <laughs> I, I, am I saying something? Uh, what's what not working? What are you saying that is not working? It, what? He said, what did you do? He started explaining. I, I tried to fix it and it was, go back there. <laughs> I said, I came to preach you. I will soon go. Less than an hour, I'll leave you. Amen. Am I saying the truth? Yes. If you have walked with him, you will know. I, I, you go back. So, so when you go back, for example, and Pastor Gibson, he said, Pastor Gibson. <laughs> Thank God he's here. Amen. He's not online. So if I'm saying what is not true, you can correct me. But I was trying to fix this thing. You see, you don't tell pastor. Say yes. <laughs> so all of us are waiting. <laughs> Forgive me, sir. Yeah, welcome back, sir. Welcome back. Can we put our hands together for him? <laughs> <laughs> so, praise the Lord. So all of us, we stay and we're looking. Ah! And he comes. Where is the thing that, is, that you say no? Ah, Pastor Emma, what is this? What is this? <laughs> How did you start this thing? And suddenly, he sees possibilities. Ah, we are like those disciples that say, Master, <laughs> what happened? Why do you think as this devil? Ah! And you will come and say, why did you start it like this? Why? The problem now is why? Forgive me, oh, amen. I'm just exposing no more because it's your perspective of life that really matters. I said the last time I preached here that faith is two things consciousness and perspective. When you have a different perspective of problem, it doesn't matter the problem. Listen, it doesn't. 
matter the problem. The problem is, the, what you call the problem or the challenge, like many great people will call it, is solving the problem. Do you know that if you can get the drug to cure cancer today, you'll be the trillionaire under one hour? But there is a perspective you have of cancer. What did I say? There is a what? A perspective you have of cancer. There is a perspective you have of failure. There is a perspective you have of a certain group of people. When they come from this region of the world of the country, this is the extent and the limit they are supposed to succeed. So they looked at Jesus and said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Because up until then, they looked at the pattern and they saw that there were limitations to these people coming out from Nazareth. And when Jesus came out, he exceeded their limits. Exceeded what you call the Nazarene limits. What is actually the limit of your goal? Why did you write, Kai, good. Why did you write $10,000 in your goal? Why? Why was the limit of your figure a particular number? Why were you, 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 you see? Because the moment you wanted to move past that number, there was a thought that came and said, Ah, you two, you know that if you pass this number, there's a problem. Leave it here where your faith can carry it. So, so, so what, what now it is, is that the Bible says that just shall what? Live by faith. So according to your faith, the Bible says, be done unto you. So what happens is that God will do to you according to your faith because you place the limitation on your faith. So what God expects of us today is that when it comes to trusting God and when it comes to trusting life, trusting your goal, your vision, going for the big things, remove the limit. Tell somebody, remove the limit. Tell me, think now as I'm speaking, what actually is your limitation? What do you think now is holding you from hammering? If they remove that thing, ah, 24 hours shut down. Think, what is that thing now that is stopping you from being a millionaire? Is it school? Is it tomorrow's model? Is it, uh, is it your, 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 your village people? Is it, um, is it money? Amen. Say, if I, if I, don't, I don't need too much. Give me 2K. <laughs> I'll show you. Because we don't understand that what we call limitation. See, what you are calling limitation now, for somebody, is not a limitation. So, who see, hey, you, you call school a limitation. I, if I, the problem is I have not graduated now. The moment I graduate, the moment I graduate, the moment I, you have graduated, <laughs> we're waiting for it to manifest. The, mom, uh, the problem now, the problem now, the problem now, that, that thing, that is the problem. What is your limitation? Is it time? Is it finance? What is the limitation? Is it where you come from? Is it Africa? Is it the place where you were giving birth to? Maybe you know you came from, let's say, one city in your country. And your country, you look at it and you are like, there's no good thing that can come out from here. What is the limitation? What is stopping you from doing the next thing you are supposed to do? Is it sleep? Is it hunger? Is it food? What is the limitation? What is, what is choking you from leaving the boat? What is stopping you? What is that limiting factor? Praise the Lord. The Bible says when they saw Jesus walking on the sea, every time people see you doing something, that is not conventional to the normal, they have a different perspective of it. 
So, 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 when you are in a gathering of people who are not used to going to church and praying and stuff, they, 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 they have an, a different perspective of you. They, when you are in a gathering of people who, um, who are average and don't want to really go far in life, who think of smallness and they love small things, they just want one car, one house, one this, this, you know, let's, let's take things easy. And, uh, you begin to aspire for something different from the status quo. Everyone in the area, for example, have not bought one land. You choose and say, I want to build a house. You, you didn't say you want to buy land. You say you want to build. That means you have to have a land to build. And they, be, they begin to see you as someone who is proud. Have you noticed? When people have money, there is a perspective the poor have of them. They say, this person is proud. I grew up hearing that a lot. Once a man, even if it's you buy car, the car that the, the whole, <laughs> everyone in the area don't have, it's two things, they suspect you. Ah, ah. Ah, God forgive me, amen. And that time we used to have meeting. So we we'll call everybody, people that think like us. You know, you can't share your thoughts because, listen, listen, the association you have actually reflects your mindset. If you don't know how you think, they'll be saying, how you think defines your life. Don't worry. Just look at the first five people at your life. Once you know, just, you, 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 you define your thinking. Don't run too far. Don't run too far to say, how is, how, how is my mindset? How is my mindset? Just look at them. They will tell you the kind of plan they have. I don't know why people are laughing. You know. Pastor, I did. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we will cut that. Start having conversation. Ah! Really, I believe this in pastor say there, is, there, are, there are principles that work in the realm of the broke. I believe it. There is a perspective. You, there's, there's a realm of rema. When you're analyzing someone who is successful, there is rema. Ah, you can start thinking things, something you didn't think before. You just have one perspective and say, ah, I believe. There is no how this guy will have this kind of money that is not doing this thing. You, you didn't even have an idea. I remember when we used to think, oh, you know when men of God raise their hand like this and people fall? If you know what was in my mind then. <laughs> I didn't know one day I would become a man of God. <laughs> I didn't know. Because you will see that when they saw Jesus doing the unusual, they said, this is a spirit. Every time people have a misconception of what the of what the impossible is, or what the in their in their own terms and their own mindset, the impossible, what well, is actually possible. Every time they have a misconception, they have a spiritual understanding of it. So you, you see this why, for example, our pastor will tell us that there is no devil anywhere. Hallelujah. Please look around. Is there a devil? Praise the Lord. A man of God said, if you can't cast him out, drag him out. Don't waste your time. People have a conception that it's, it's, it, ah, once you wake up and it's headache, you didn't eat too. The first thing you think is, ah, who are they now? <laughs> Why well, starting my day? Because I've not had my devotion. People are trying me. Why are they trying you? The first thing is see, that's the problem with becoming too much over spiritual, without understanding things, without having knowledge. You so much generalize, generalize things in this. This was just Jesus walking. Ah, ah. Jesus was just walking, sir. Just walking. The next thing they say it's a spirit. And because they interpreted it like that, they had fear. So the, the knowledge of the fear came because they had a wrong interpretation of their vision. So that thing you are seeing and you have written and they call harvest, you have a wrong interpretation of it and you think this has to be impossible. Fear comes in. This has to be, it's not achievable. Fear comes in. The moment pastor said, for example, you will do this this year. When you had a vision of it, you misinterpreted it and fear came in. Ah, no more limits, sir. It has to stop today. 
you will see that hey, that you, you will see that what one person is doing is not huh, that somebody is walking on water means that you can walk on water. If if there was nobody who walked on water, would have said okay. But Jesus began the pattern and said, "I'm not just walking on a lake. I'm walking on the sea." And when you begin to check the content of the sea, you can find out that everything that is under the sea had dominion of it. So he walking on water meant that the gold, the oil, everything, he was working on them. They were not on him. He was not scared that the prosperity was going to choke his spiritual life. He was not scared that, you know, the money he was going to make. He had control of the sea, of the sea. Tell me, say with me, the sea. The sea. Where you walk actually matters, but I don't want to talk about that. He was, he, he gave an example already that he was walking on the sea. I said, this year you will walk on the sea. I don't know what the sea is in your life, but you will walk on it. When you begin to walk on it, 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 it speaks of dominion. It speaks of authority. In verse 27, we are going to run through it again. Uh, hallelujah. The Bible says, but straight away Jesus spoke unto them and said, be of good cheer. It is I. The thing that you are afraid of is it's me. They had a vision and they saw that it was the spirit. But Jesus said, no, you are seeing wrongly. What you are seeing is not the correct thing. What you are seeing is not the correct thing. I say again, what is that limitation in your life? Okay, let's, let, let, let's do something practical. You have, you, can you remember the goals you have for this year? Can you remember at least, even if you don't have it? Amen? Praise the Lord. Can you remember first? Uh, if we can't remember, then we can't. I don't know how practical we can become. Oh. Can you remember? Uh, I'll be a forming goal now. Stop forming goals. If my goal is to uh, stop. To be the greatest person in Ukraine. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, because I want you to put your goal. Let's say you imagine your goal. Praise the Lord. Ask yourself, what can actually stop me from achieving this thing? The notion of I can't should be erased from your memory forever. You never, never hear Jesus say, I cannot. Never. Never. Not, never. Never that you hear Jesus say, I cannot. He rather use and not, because what happens when you say, I can't, is even, praise the Lord. Praise, by God's privilege, I'm studying neurology. What happens by, even your brain, when you say, I can't, even your own body and your own brain shuts down. Medically, shuts down. Refuses to think. Becomes lazy. I can't go anywhere today. You will just find out that you actually won't go anywhere. Medically. Even saying, I can, I can, I can. That was why Paul said, I can do all things. There was a notion. It activates both your physical and your spiritual. God is not, you know, we have taught on faith in God and Pastor Phoebe dealt with that and, uh, you know, sp I spoke a bit on it. No, 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 no. It's not even just have faith in God. Praise the Lord. Say have faith in God. But also have faith in yourself. <clears throat> when will you even believe this you? When will you even believe this you? Are you not tired of doubting? Is there not a point where you come and say, I, I've I'm the reason why I can't doubt now is because I'm tired of doubting. You have been doubting for 20 something years. Come and stop and say, ah, it's okay. Doubt is okay. You have tried now. How many years? Let faith continue at least. When will faith start its work in your life? When will faith what? You have looked at the many reasons. Listen, if it ever entered your mind, listen, I'm not coming to motivate you. I'm telling you the word of God. 
if it ever come into your mind, it's because it has happened before. Wait. If it ever come into your mind, it's because it has happened before. The problem is that you didn't know history. If it ever, if it ever come into your mind, it's because it has happened before. So there is nothing called impossible. Because it has happened before. Am I correct? Have you eaten before? If your son come today and say, I can't eat. You, you, you begin to use yourself as an example. Am I correct? So what has been is what will be. So if you are dreaming today, you'll become a millionaire. You're not the first person. It's happened before. It will happen again. After you, it will still happen. And it will continue to happen. So why doubt that you cannot be something that you are dreaming of? If it cross you your mandula or blogata, it can happen. Don't the problem is that don't think it. If you think it, it will happen. Praise the Lord. So God had to show a perspective for us that Jesus is walking on water. So you are, for example, you are looking through whatever it is, you are looking through social media or something, and you see something. The moment you capture it in your mind, the reason is that uh, it ha huh, let it not be possible in this realm. The moment one person has become a trillionaire, you can. You have vision.